fans on all of our OMD pen and tough cameras. You can get a feel for them. You can play with them. You can imagine how they would help you create more bookings and more profit. And of course, we are here to answer all your questions along the way. But now it is time for your next featured speaker. Everybody ready? All right, Joe Edelman is an award-winning photographer and educator based in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Joe is well known for his very popular YouTube channel that aims to teach photographers the hows and whys behind making great photographs. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Olympus visionary photographer, Joe Edelman. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. So first of all, thank you all for coming out to see me chat today. Uh, I want to do something that you probably haven't heard before. I want to say thank you to you, obviously, for coming to see me talk. But, but seriously, thank you for being photographers. Thank you, more importantly, for creating. I've been very fortunate to spend pretty much all of my life around a camera, with a camera, creating. It's something that's very important to me. If you know me on YouTube, in fact, do any of you follow me on YouTube? Awesome. Good. Thank you. For those of you that didn't raise your hands, it's OK. You can stay. Hopefully, you'll consider following me afterwards. But you know that my passion is photography and getting other people involved, and most importantly, thinking. I love all this gear stuff. Who doesn't, right? But it's the process. It's the art of photography that really gets me going. So Olympus has been kind enough to invite me here to talk to you guys about the kind of photography that I do, which is these really kind of cool and wild and different fashion portraits. If any of you are afraid of clowns, my apologies. Okay. The neat part about these pictures for me, there are no rules. I get to do whatever I want to do with the camera and with my settings. Because a traditional portrait, it has some rules. It has a purpose. There's a goal that you're trying to accomplish with that portrait. So I'll give you one simple example. Everybody today wants really nice portraits for their social media, or better yet, LinkedIn, if they're doing job hunting. So here's your first pro tip. If you shoot a portrait for a friend or a client and it's going to be used on LinkedIn or on a social media profile and you pose them this way, you have failed them. You need to pose them to this direction or straight ahead with a slight tilt, but not this way. Why? Because they're looking off the page, okay? So in that situation, you're not just trying to create a portrait that makes them look good, makes them look friendly, makes it look like somebody might want to actually work with them, but also that doesn't create a design element that's a distraction. So this cool stuff about this is I get to do whatever I want. If I have a crazy idea in my head, I get to play with it. And you'll see one of the things that I do a lot of is kind of calm in the middle of chaos. I love having a pretty girl with really interesting makeup and great eyes and being able to do something really chaotic around her. Most of the time I do it in camera. Sometimes I do it in post like this. The balls were photographed separately. But just to give you a little piece of insight about this image, how many of you are already Olympus shooters? Oh, this is great. I have opportunity here. Okay, so this image in Allentown, Pennsylvania right now is on a 48-foot wide billboard, 48 feet wide by 14 feet tall. And it's shot with the Olympus, the OMD EM1 Mark II. And it's tack sharp with micro four thirds, right? So believe me, sensor size, highly overrated. Good photography is the key, all right? And even this image here, if you want to see a nice big print of it, there's one hanging right around the wall when you go to leave. So these are some of the kinds of things that I do. And for those of you, how many of you are already making money with your camera, or trying to make money with your camera? Anybody? Are you doing portraits? Okay, so I'll give you a little hint. And I, most of you that raise your hands, you're old enough to remember this, so don't roll your eyes when I say it. Portrait photographers today, in my opinion, are missing a really, really good opportunity to make a lot of money doing portraits. One of the things that you have to remember about your photography, it's not about you. Not if you're a portrait photographer, not if you want people to pay you. It's about the subject, and more importantly, it's about the experience that you provide them, right? Remember back in the 1980s, when shopping malls were really popular, women would go to the mall and they would spend an afternoon or an evening at a place called Glamour Shots. And they would get all dolled up and they would get these really cheesy glamour pictures taken. Well, I gotta tell you, if you do a little bit of research and pay attention, there are a lot of photographers today making a ton of money 
doing the modern version of glamour shots. And what the modern version is, wherever you're located, wherever your studio is, you partner with a local spa, you partner with a local hair salon, a local nail salon, and what you do is you put together a package so that portrait session for someone, doing these kinds of portraits, just cool, dramatic portraits, because people have disposable income today, you're providing them a day-long experience where they get to get, you know, they go to a spa, they have a treatment done, maybe they even get a massage, then they get their nails done, their hair done, their makeup done, and when it's all done, you're gonna take them into the studio and create this work of art with them. So believe me, think outside the box. There's lots of opportunity out there if you are trying to sell portraits and you want to build a business as a portrait photographer. So enough of that. Let's get into doing some photography. I am very fortunate today. I have a very beautiful model with me. Her name is Lindsay. Lindsay, come on up and have a seat. Okay. So a lot of these images that you just saw go by in the screen, they can take me anywhere from 15 minutes to literally about an hour and a half in the studio shooting. And I don't have an hour and a half today because there's some other great talks coming up. So what I want to try and do today is really just force you to think outside the box. I'm going to work with some very basic, very simple lighting. I'm going to show you some of the crazy things that you saw wrapped around models and flying through the air to give you a sense of how I do it. And my hope is that you will leave here after WPPI and go home and try it and better it because you can. Okay, so let's talk about gear really quick. To start with, I am using the brand new Olympus OMD EM1X. Pay close attention. Contrary to what it says on the internet, it is not gihugic. In fact, it's only a smidge bigger than the camera that I used on this stage last year. That's the EM1 Mark II, okay? I'm using my favorite 45 millimeter f1.2 Pro lens. And uh, I will probably switch partway through to the 75 millimeter f1.8. The only reason I'm going to switch that lens is because of the shot that I'm going to do. I need to have a narrower field of view. So I'll, I'll show you that when we get to it. From a lighting standpoint, I am going to keep it very, very simple. I'm working with two lights. And something I don't usually do, if you follow me on YouTube, you know that I usually use the Godox strobes. Well, along with the announcement of the EM1X, Olympus also released a new set of speed lights. These are the FL700WRs, really tiny. Now, I'm not normally a speed light guy, but the fact of the matter is a lot of people that follow me are speed light folks. A lot of you, if you do weddings and events along with your portraits, you're also using speed lights. What impressed me about these, and the reason why I asked if I could use them for my talk, one, size. Two, they have a very respectable guide number of 42 at ISO 100. Three, and this is the important one for me, because you might have noticed I'm a little type A, so I tend to do things fast. With lithium batteries, this flash has a recycle time of 1.5 seconds. That is incredible for a speed light. And if you like to get creative and do some of that high speed stuff, you know, the water drops and that type of stuff, at 1 1 28th power, this has a flash duration of 1 20,000th of a second natively. It's really, really fast. So I'm going to use two of them. The first one I've got set up here in an S clamp that has a Bowens mount and this Photoflex Rapidome. This is a, a beauty dish modifier that's classable, except I'm not using it as a beauty dish. I'm just using it as a round softbox. I've taken the metal plate out. I have a diffuser baffle in the middle and the front diffuser that you see. Point that I want to make here is I'm using the round modifier because I want a round catch light. Now, let me clarify something. You may have heard me talk about this before on YouTube. I'm not one of those photographers that has to have a certain kind of catch light. It doesn't bother me if I have a round or a square or a rectangular, as long as the catch light is not stealing attention from a beautiful subject. But if I'm doing more of a traditional portrait setup, I will go with the round modifier, and that is because we learn, our brains learn at a very young age that catch lights are round because the sun is round. So that's the most natural catch light, but it is not a rule. I promise you, the only people that ever talk to me about catch lights, they actually look a lot like you guys. They have cameras around their necks, and you know, they just want to know if it's OK. So my rule is, just don't make it distracting. So that's why we've got the round modifier. And what I want to start out with here, let me just get a test shot in uh, to see where we're at with exposure and everything else. Let's see if we can do that same little turn again. Good. 
poll, and it looks like one of my flashes went to sleep. So second pro tip, I gave you one already. The second pro tip is that your strobes work a whole lot better when you actually turn them on, okay? Um, so, so that was the first one. All right, let's try a second test here. All right, there we go. So I want to point out this software really quick, especially since those of you that are, or were here at least when I started are not Olympus users. This software is an Olympus proprietary software. It's called Olympus Capture. I love it because it's just wickedly fast. But what you're seeing from right to left on your screen is a control panel on the right-hand side that if I was working on a computer in the studio, it would allow me to control all the shooting features of the camera from the computer. The second piece, for going from right to left, is the live view. As you can see, it's a live image. If she blinks, you see it blink there. So that's exactly what's going through the camera. And then last is what I'm seeing as a finished image, okay? For those of you that are interested in tethering, I always get asked, well, can I use it with Lightroom? Can I use it with Capture One? And the answer is yes, but to be clear, Capture One does not support the tethering of Olympus cameras, and that's okay, because all you do is you set a hot folder, and this software is double the speed for downloads of what you'll get with Capture One. So that's something when I made the switch I was worried about, and honestly, this is so much easier and so much faster. So I've got my one light set up. I do want to point out the position of this light. I told you about the round catch light. That's important. You'll notice I've got the bottom of the modifier basically at Lindsay's chin. So the majority of the light is still above her. A rookie mistake that portrait photographers make is, and it's kind of logical if you don't really have that much experience, is they'll lower the modifier and put the person's eyes like right in the middle of the modifier. And while sometimes you'll get away with it, the problem that you have there is you still have a lot of light coming from below. From the time we're little toddlers, our brains are wired that light comes from above. That's why there's no lights in the floor. And that's why Hollywood, when they make zombie movies, put all the lights down here because it creates the top shadows. So for good portrait lighting, you don't want your lights low, you want them above. And even if you're doing like a beauty look where you want really smooth lighting, you still want a hint of shadow and shading to give the face definition. You don't want it to disappear in your light. So for me, I've mo got most of my light above her. You'll notice in this test shot that that gray wall is not black. So if you have followed me on YouTube, you know that my favorite background color is gray. The folks at Olympus were kind enough to design this stage to my specifications. Not really, but still. It's all gray, so that's awesome, okay? Uh, but I want to show you how we can turn this into different backgrounds and actually change the tone and the mood of the picture. Because if you're going to start shooting portraits, as you start purchasing backgrounds, you're going to realize two things. One, they're not cheap. Two, once you've got it, you don't want to have to replace it right away. So you want to try and find as many different ways to use it and different variations without it looking like you're taking all of your pictures on the same background. So for me, gray is one of my favorite ones to work with. So let's see, a little bit of turn, good. Tiny little chin push, kind of happy there. That's it, good. Okay, so I've got that dark background. Now, just to show you some of the options, you can see the soft hint of the catch light, the top of her eyes, that's where we want it. Some people will feel that the shading on camera left is too dramatic. So let's be clear, there's no right or wrong. It's strictly a matter of taste, okay? So for those of you that think it may be too dramatic, does anybody know what this is called? Walmart reflector, yeah, except we have to change the name now because Walmart doesn't sell them anymore, so they're now the dollar store reflectors. That's it, okay? Um, I love these because they literally are only a buck, so if you destroy it, the world is not ending. I'm the guy that buys the really fancy collapsible ones and sets them down and then walks on them. So these are perfect, right? So if I do the same shot, little turn, good, little chin push. Now, take a good look at that shadow that's on the camera left side of her face. If I bring this reflector in nice and close and do my shot, now you're gonna see, not only do I soften that shadow, but I even managed to pick up just a hint of a catch rim along the side, just with a $1 modifier. 
So obviously we're supposed to be spending lots of money in this room today, so please don't tell on me, okay? That you don't have to spend a ton of money on the gadgets. And again, if you follow my videos, you know, for me, I want to spend my money on this stuff, and especially these things. That's where you really want to make your investments. If I can hack or DIY some type of an accessory, absolutely, that's the way to go. So now, if we want to kind of soften this overall and we don't want it as dramatic, the easiest thing to do is simply add a light in the background. So normally, I would put this light behind my subject going at the background. But I've got two things working with me here. One, this wall is angled. And two, it's actually got a little bit of a reflection to it. So that's why what I'm doing is setting my light up so I'm going straight at the wall. So just so you understand why I have it over here. And it's not to say that you can't put your light on the side, but that's specifically why I made this choice. So I'm going to go ahead. Do I have it turned on? Yep, didn't want to make the same mistake twice. OK. So I've got that one turned up at full power right now. So remember, these are tiny little speed lights that we're working with, OK? A little turn, a little push, good. And we can get a white background out of that just by making that change. But again, remember, I told you, try and find as many ways as you can to use and reuse and change the look of your backgrounds. So even if you buy like a painted background, same thought process is in play here. So what I can do is I can go ahead and, oh, quick, really, everybody wave to Google. Wave to Google. There we go. Hi. OK, cool. All right. So, <laughs> all right. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a colored purple gel on there. All right. And I'm, I'm not going to change the, the power settings at all to start. I'm just going to use the purple gel. We're going to do the same shot, a little push, Lindsay, good. And it'll work a whole lot better when the flash fires. Let's try that one more time. Sorry. Am I on channel five? There we go. Channel five, all right, here we go. A little push with the chin and up just a bit. Good, nice. Okay, so now I get a pretty bright purple background. I've also got a little bit of a hot spot, which I can adjust that if I move that. But here's what I want to show you, just to give you the thought process, and then we'll get to the cool stuff, right? If I start to dial the power of that flash down, I can change how dramatic it looks. So for the first one, I'm just going to cut it down by half. So we're going to go to half power. So that's just one stop difference, right? Same thing, little push. Good. All right. And so we're starting to pick up a little bit more riches in the color. And then if I go ahead and we take it down even further, I'm going to go down to like an eighth power and a little push, chin up a little bit. Good. So I can get nice, deep, rich color out of it. And if you happen to have other strobes, you could add another strobe, another gel, and literally the possibilities are endless, OK? So last thing here with this setup, before we move on to some craziness, I love black and white. I'm an old guy, so I remember the days in black and white. I had a dark room, all that stuff. But for those of you that are young enough to not remember black and white film, let me explain to you something that we all did back in the film days, and I would encourage you to do it in the digital days. If I was shooting color transparency film, especially slides, I would set my exposures and my lighting one way, and then if I was going to switch to black and white, I would expose and I would light differently for black and white, because in that black and white image, I want good blacks, I want good whites, and I want all the grays in between. We've all heard of Ansel Adams, right? OK, so that's, that's what you're looking for, for values. It was a different thought process. Then digital came along, and we can push a button. It's like, ooh, it's black and white. It's really cool. Sometimes it is really cool. Other times, it actually just leads to really bad black and white images, right? So when I'm shooting a black and white image, or if I have a black and white image in mind, I am going to do it in camera. I'm going to shoot raw, so yes, it's going to record a color file. But what I'll do is, on the super control panel for my camera, which I'm going to flip out here for those of you that aren't Olympus users, this is a really cool feature that comes up on the LCD screen. And it allows me to basically set all my major camera controls. So I'm going to go to picture mode, and I'm going to switch that over to monochrome for black and white. You can see the live view has changed. Now, the live view that you're seeing up here, it looks a little flat, not a lot of contrast. But what I've already done in advance is I've gone into that monochrome setting and pushed the contrast up to plus two. In fact, pretty much every brand here, your contrast setting will go up to plus two. That's where it maxes in camera. So now what I'm going to get as a result of that, that little turn, chin up just a bit, good. 
Now I'm gonna get an image that's got that nice, dramatic, rich black and white tone. But better yet, I know when i all done and I go and I download my images and these pop up in color because that's what's gonna happen. Doesn't matter what software you use. You can use Capture One, Lightroom, Photoshop, Bridge. It's gonna flip it over to color as they download because it's a raw file. But I know it's gonna look great in black and white when I convert it. So this in and of itself brings a little bit of drama to the table. But now let's see if we can go ahead and we can get a little bit crazier here, shall we? So mounted on my tripod here, this is just a remote control unit that I'm going to use. It's an inexpensive control unit that I got off of Amazon, nothing fancy. Uh, it is wireless. So when I'm working in my studio, generally it is me, the model, and a makeup artist, OK? So frequently what I will do when I'm doing these kind of chaotic ideas is I will work from behind the subject and do all the material stuff. And then I'll have my makeup artist situated out front, kind of giving the model some guidance about where to be looking, et cetera. So fortunately, Lindsay's a pro. So I can tell her what I need, and she's going to stay there. But I'm going to do this picture from behind her. So we're going to do the same thing, a little turn, good. And kind of pleasant expression. That's it. I'm going to set that right there. Let me just get one frame. All right, so that's a good composition. I can work with that. So this light's turned off, by the way. In fact, we'll take that out of play altogether. So what I've got back here is I've got a fan. I will apologize in advance. When I did this this morning, I overlooked the idea that the fan is going to blow right at the microphone. So it's going to sound like a wind tunnel in a minute. You'll get to experience what I'm experiencing, OK? So this material is tool. It's the same stuff that they make bridal veils out of, all right? Now, Normally in the studio, just to be random about it, I probably wouldn't have it attached to the stand. But since I've only got a few minutes to do this shot, I wanted to come up with a way that I could come close to replicating the results on a regular basis. So I've got it just simply rubber banded into the middle of the stand. I am going to kneel down back here. Remember, I've got my trigger in my hand. Now, when you do this shot, it's really, really, really important. The shot that you don't want to take, OK? So you got to kind of pay attention. And this is where the live view comes in really handy. Don't do this picture. Like, that's not the one that you want, OK? So you, you got to pay a little bit more attention. Stay out of the way a little bit. And now I'm going to bring some of this material up. And you can see that, obviously, we can go around with that for a little while. But you can see what it does is it adds a layer of depth. And it also adds some drama to the shot that you're setting up. And again, folks, remember, all good photography is problem solving. All good creativity is thinking outside the box. So once we've got this piece going, assuming that we have a second strobe, remember, you could go ahead and you could put a flashback here and light through it. If you added gel, you're going to change the color. You could still put the flashback here, and you'd have the subtle white with your colors. And I could go on for about the next 10 minutes of all the different variations we could do. So the point is, try it and experiment. One of the things that you don't want to do, and I see so many photographers do this, and I don't understand it. They have an idea. They set it up. It looks cool, and they stop. I'm not that good. I've never been that good. Even if I get lucky and on my first frame, I'm like, God, that's exactly what I had in my mind. I am going to do what I call work the shop. I want to see what else can I do. If I change this, what will happen? If I change that, what will happen? Where can I take the picture to? And usually my, my guideline is I will keep working the shot until it sucks. Then I know, OK, I went too far, but I'm happy that I have stuff along the way. And even if I don't wind up liking some of those additional ideas, if I'm really trying to be creative and trying different things, I'm also learning some new tricks and some ideas that I can apply to future pictures. OK? So I'm getting a little tight on time here. And there's one last shot that I want to do. Uh, guys in the back, I'm going to do live composite. So if you can change the lighting for me. So 
I know that when I asked earlier, there are not a lot of Olympus shooters here, so this is good. You folks that are users of other brands are gonna be a little frustrated when you see this trick, okay? So you all understand the idea of bulb or time exposure, right? So normally, like, if you were gonna do something like that, you would, and, and you wanted to photograph a person, you would need to do it in the dark, right? Otherwise, all of these lights are gonna just give you a really blurry picture. But Olympus has a feature that I love, and when I first became an Olympus user, I saw a lot of articles on the Olympus website, which, by the way, is a great resource. If you're ever considering Olympus cameras, go to getolympus.com and, and look at the learning tools they have, some awesome stuff there. But all of the stuff that was there was about astrophotography and like car trails at night. And I thought, okay, well, that's a feature that has no bearing for me. But again, if you follow me on YouTube, you know that I like to hack things and see where can I go with it. So after a little while, I realized, like, you know what? I could use this to make a portrait background. So what I'm going to do for you is I want to create my last shot, and I'm going to create the background in real time while we take the picture. So that is not going to be the background. And the way this camera is going to do it in live composite, I've got the camera preset to half a second exposures. And what it's going to do is it's going to keep taking one half second exposures over and over and over and over and over again. Not multiple frames. This is all on the same frame. When I press the button the first time, the flash will go off, and you'll see her picture pop up. And your first load is going to be big deal. It's exactly what he did before. But then I am going to use an LED light wand, which I'll show you in a second and I'm gonna draw the background in, and as I'm doing it, you'll see the background appear on the screen in real time, okay? So, let me just grab a prop here so we can make this at least a little bit interesting. And by the way, like this whole fashion portrait idea, you don't have to spend tons of money for the props and the outfits. I get a lot of stuff on Amazon, really cheap. I'll get sunglasses that are like clearance for like four or five bucks on Amazon. Uh, I go to Joanne Fabrics and I buy pieces of material off the clearance rack and then I figure out how could I wrap this around somebody, what could I do with it, right? So, Lindsay, if I can give you that. And real quick here, I am going to change the power of this flash, my main flash, and that's the only one I'm going to use, by the way. I'm going to turn it all the way up to full power because what I want to be able to do, whoops, I want to be able to shoot at like, F16, F14, somewhere in there. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't have all this ambient light interfering with my half second exposure. So, yeah, we can make that work. Okay, so, Lindsay, just like we did before, you are gonna turn your face right to here. Good, shoulders are good where they're at. Okay, in fact, my bad. Bring your face right here, pick a spot right behind me, right there, that's your spot. Awesome, cool. Back this up just a little bit. All right, and check our focus. Good, okay. So now, I'm gonna switch the camera over to live composite mode, which just like you have bulb and you have time exposure, it's a setting in the camera. You're gonna to wanna to watch the live view, which is the middle one. And I'm gonna create the background using an RGB light wand from Savage. They have um, an iPhone app that connects via Bluetooth. You only ever have to connect it once, and then every time you turn this on, it'll automatically connect to your phone. But I'm going to use this to draw the background in it. And if anybody's really good with Star Wars effects, sound effects, now's like the perfect time. So when I set this up, the first thing that's going to happen here, I'm going to get out of the frame. The camera right now is setting up for live exposure, and that's what it says on the back of the camera. Once I press the button again, and Lindsay, you're going to hold still. Okay, so there's our shot. We are taking the picture right now. Isn't this exciting? I know, right. So watch what's going to happen. As I walk through the frame, it didn't start. My bad. One more time. You ready? Here we go. Lindsay, we're going to go again. And flash. That's it. Now it is taking the picture. So I'm going to walk through the frame. And I'm going to create a really cool streak. But now we need some reflection in those glasses. It's a cool color on her. All right, so there it is. And you can also create depth. I'm going to turn the brightness down. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna swipe this in front of her just to get a little depth. And when I press the shutter release now, you can move. It's gonna develop it, it's gonna do noise reduction, and it's gonna give me a raw file. This is not a JPEG. So you're not sacrificing that quality when you do it. So first of all, thank you for coming out to see me this afternoon. A couple of things that's really important for you to know. Number one, if you are not an Olympus shooter, and if you are now what I like to refer to as Olympus curious, all the cameras are here, all these folks in the black shirts with the Olympus logos can tell you all about them. Right behind this big wall here is our F1.2 shooting station where there's a bunch of cameras out. If you have a secure digital card with you, you can go out there, we've got some models out there. There's like Laura Croft and Tomb Raider kind of vibe going on. Take some pictures and you have the opportunity to win a new EM1X from Olympus if you get your badge scanned right over here. And if you take pictures in this booth back here, post them on social media, tag at Get Olympus and at Joe Edelman, you have an opportunity to win an OMD EM1 Mark II with the 45 millimeter F1.2 Pro lens. And let's see, next up, who's coming up next? I missed it. Gabrielle. Uh, Gabrielle's gonna be back in a few minutes to show us some of her travels through Kenya and some of the amazing things that she has done with her cameras on really a world stage. So hopefully you'll check that out. But please, enjoy the rest of WPPI. Thanks for coming by. And I hope to see you on YouTube. All right. Take care. Joe Edelman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, dear.